and welcome back to our channel. Recently, we had the chance to visit Mother Angelica's Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament in Alabama, and that was such an incredible place. It was so much more than we had ever imagined. And it got us thinking about what are some other cool Catholic places that we'd love to go visit. So we made a top 10 bucket list of Catholic places that we would like to see. And today we're sharing that list with you. So let's get started. So our top 10 list is in no particular order because we would love to see any or all of these places, but definitely number one on the list is the miraculous Laredo staircase located in Santa Fe, New Mexico. This is a history mystery that we have long been fascinated with. So the short version of the story is that back in the 1800s, the nuns of Laredo living out in Santa Fe needed a staircase for their newly built chapel. The chapel had been built, but a staircase to the choir loft had been completely forgotten. Oops. <laughs> so, <laughs> that happened. so they were in a very tight spot and they decided to pray a novena to St. Joseph and ask for his help. So the nuns asked St. Joseph to send them a carpenter. And on the ninth day of the novena, a mystery man appeared out of the desert. He came and he said that he would build the nuns a staircase, but he never told them his name. He never asked for money for labor or supplies. And he insisted that he work in the chapel by himself. So all of his work was done in secret. And then one day he just disappeared, poof, and left the completed staircase behind. And there are lots of unusual and interesting things about this staircase. It was made without any nails. It makes two complete 360 degree turns, which technically means that the staircase should collapse the minute anyone tried to use it. And the wood that he used to make the staircase matches no known wood on earth. So was it St. Joseph himself who built the staircase? The nuns thought it was. We don't know, but we definitely want to go and see the staircase. The second place on our bucket list is the home of St. Therese of Lisieux in northern France. She is my confirmation saint, so I would love to go see her home one day. It's called Le Boissonnet and was actually the home to three future saints. Therese herself, and then both of her parents, Louis and Zelie Martin. While you're there, you can also visit the beautiful Cathedral of St. Therese, which over 700,000 people a year go to visit, and I hope that we can be two of those people someday soon. It is the second most popular pilgrimage site in France after Lourdes. And it's very interesting that the town of Lisieux was actually destroyed in bombings in World War II, but a lot of the places there associated with St. Therese were left completely unharmed. So that's really cool. That is super cool. Number three on the list is Mary's house in Ephesus. We did a video recently on the holy wells and healing water of the Blessed Mother, and one of those wells is located at her house in Ephesus in modern-day Turkey. According to church tradition, this is the place where Mary lived with St. John the Apostle after Jesus died and they had to flee Jerusalem because of all the different persecutions. Now, for a long time, the location of the house was lost to history, but in 1891, archaeologists actually found the foundations of the house and the remnants of the holy well behind the house. So it's located on a secluded mountainside, and it was from this house that Mary was assumed into heaven. And the site has also been visited by three different popes, the most recent being Benedict XVI in 2006. So it looks like such a peaceful and beautiful place in the pictures. Definitely holy, wonderful, definitely on our list. Number four is the Shrine of Our Lady of Good Help in Champion, Wisconsin, where the Blessed Mother appeared to a young woman named Adele Brees back in 1859. So this past winter, we read a wonderful book about this apparition called The Woman in the Trees by Theone Bell. And so, of course, that just made us want to go there even more. It is the only officially approved apparition site of Mary in the United States. And we've never been to Wisconsin for any reason. So how cool would it be to go there and to visit a site where the Blessed Mother actually appeared? I've never been to an apparition site, so I think that would be a lots of fun. Number five is another apparition site, and that is the Rue de Bac in Paris, 
where the Blessed Mother appeared to Catherine Labouré in 1830 and commissioned her to have the miraculous medal made. Okay, so number one, this is a great excuse to go to Paris, right? Any excuse will do. But number two, we also love the Blessed Mother so much here. We love the Miraculous Meadow. It is very near and dear to our hearts. So why would we not want to go and see where it all started? We also really love the story of Alphonse Ratisbon, who was a Jewish lawyer who hated the Catholic Church but was converted to Catholicism through the intercession of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal, and then eventually became a beloved Catholic priest. So that is one of my very favorite Catholic stories ever, and we made a video about it. It's one of my favorite videos because I just love this story so much. You never know what the Blessed Mother is up to. So number six on our bucket list is anywhere in the Holy Land. <laughs> but particularly the Garden of Gethsemane and the Mount of Olives, where Jesus prayed the night before he was crucified. So we know from scripture that the Garden of Gethsemane was Jesus's favorite place to pray. He often went there. It was on the way between Jerusalem and Bethany. So he frequently stopped there and just being there in one of his favorite places surrounded by all the ancient olive trees, we just think that would be really neat. There's also a grotto or cave in the garden where it's thought that the disciples often spent the night when they were passing through the area. In fact, it may have been where they were sleeping on Holy Thursday night when they were supposed to be praying with Jesus. <laughs> supposed to be. Um, there's another church tradition that says it was in this cave that Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss. But if we go there, we're just going to focus on the beauty and the nature, and this is where Jesus was, and just go with that. So number seven on our list is for all of you Padre Pio fans out there, because yes, we do have San Giovanni Rotondo on our list. We would love to see the town and the monastery where Padre Pio lived to visit his shrine, and also Our Lady of Grace Church. So St. Pio was so incredibly amazing. He could bilocate, he performed miraculous healings, he had the stigmata, he was even known to read souls. So that meant if you went to confession with him and you accidentally left something out, he would not hesitate to remind you. And so I always think of him when I go to confession. <laughs> We also love the story of when he met a young priest named Carol Botia and said, well, here's a man who's going to be Pope someday. I love that story. <laughs> so number eight is another shrine that we would love to visit, and that is St. Joseph's Oratory in Montreal, founded by St. Andre Bisset. So Brother Andre was the doorman for the Congregation of the Holy Cross, basically because his superiors thought that he wasn't really good for anything else. He always had poor health and was a little bit of a drifter with no special skills. So you can be the doorman. <laughs> But he was very devoted to St. Joseph, and as a doorman, he was known to perform miraculous healings for the people who came to see him. But he always said it was through the intercession of St. Joseph that these things could happen. So he wanted to build a chapel for St. Joseph, so he did. He started off small, but eventually that grew over time into the Oratory, which is the tallest church in Canada and also one of the largest domed buildings in the entire world. World. Not too shabby for the doorman. But it's also interesting just how many saints started off in life as doormen. We had Brother Andre, Solanus Casey, Alphonsus Rodriguez. There's probably more. Yeah, so I guess if you want to become a saint, then you could you volunteer to be a doorman somewhere. That seems to be the fast track to sainthood. Number nine on our list is the magnificent Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela in Spain, which is the church at the end of the Camino. So you know how much we love the Camino here. We talk about the way of St. James quite a lot. We virtually walked it last year, roughly 500 miles of it, and we would love to do it in person one day. St. James and his brother John are two of my very favorite saints, the Sons of Thunder. I definitely know that personality type, but plus I just love all the stories of James and his work in Spain, trying to convert the locals and his encounter with Our Lady of the Pillar, just really fascinating stuff. So we would love to go there. So number 10, last but not least, is the Ave Maria Grotto in Coleman, Alabama. 
So this is a four acre park located on the grounds of St. Bernard Abbey, and it has 125 miniature replicas of different religious sites from all around the world, including the Holy Land. The Ave Maria Grotto gets rave reviews online, and all the miniatures there were created by one monk, Brother Joseph Zeddy, who had no formal training as an artist, and he did all this work before the internet even existed for reference. So that's pretty amazing. So there's a walking trail there. At Christmas, they have a light display um, and you could see Jerusalem in miniature or the seven wonders of the world, all kinds of crazy fun things. Okay. And we also read online that in the gift shop there, the monks have a bakery and the food is supposed to be delicious. <laughs> so we want to know, are the monks cookies better than the cookies we got at the shrine of Mother Angelica? So if we went there, we could do a bake off the monks versus Mother Angelica. And we would taste a lot of different things so that we could definitely report back to you. Apparently this is the thing she thinks of when... It's an added bonus of, you know, going on a road All right, like okay. That. okay, bake so off it is. Off. But anyway, this could definitely be a future road trip for us. It could be the first item on this list that gets checked off, so we'll keep you posted. So that's our top 10 list of Catholic places that we would love to visit. Let us know down in the comments which place you think that we should tackle first or if you've ever been to any of these places. Or just let us know what some of your favorite Catholic places are. So as always, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.